Imagine being able to walk in a forest and instantly know where all the predators are hiding. It might sound impossible, but this is exactly what robins do every single day, and they do it totally under the radar of all the unsuspecting humans around them. You might be tempted to think of robins as just another backyard songbird, hunting worms and making nests on your front porch, but the truth is robins are masters of survival with one of the most sophisticated and nuanced alarm languages in the entire bird world. So today, we're unlocking the secrets of three common alarm calls that not only reveal hidden predators, but also give us clues about the actions they're taking, whether they're moving or standing still, are they up in a tree or on the ground, and what kind of predator is lurking nearby, even if you can't see it yet. So when it comes to robin alarms, there's one common predator that's always my favorite place to start because this particular threat triggers the perfect combination of alarms that are both extremely loud and obvious, yet also surprisingly common. And even if you think you don't have this animal in your area, there's a really good chance that you probably do. And I'm talking about owls. Owls are actually the first predator I ever learned to find with bird language, and the most common call that robins make in this situation is this incredibly loud peak alarm. Because to me, it sounds like they're saying the word peak over and over again. So this is the robin's primary mobbing call for high stakes predators and whenever you hear this sound it's a really good sign that there's something going on with the robins. It's actually pretty amazing how many owls you can find just by knowing this one obvious call. But it's also important to realize the sound of this call is really just a first clue that indicates a heightened emotional state, but robins will also use this call during territorial fights and at dusk when they're settling down to roost for the night. So the real question is how do you know when this robin call is actually being used as an alarm? The answer lies in how these calls are being made. Notice how this alarm actually involves multiple robins all crowding around a central point. They're not chasing each other in a burst of activity like they would in a territorial dispute, and they're not scattered randomly around the forest like they are at dusk, and instead, their attention is laser focused on one central spot up in a tree. You can even notice how every so often they fly in to dive bomb the owl. We see a huge amount of tail flicking and pointing their beaks towards the owl, which is all designed to quickly grab the attention of other birds and show you exactly where that owl is. Additionally, if you listen to the rhythm of these calls, not just the sound itself, do you hear how it almost sounds like they're all kind of talking over each other? This overlapping, syncopated rhythm is a key feature of bird mobbing alarms, and once you learn to hear it, it's absolutely unmistakable. You'll hear this rhythm with lots of different predators, but owl alarms are especially easy for beginners because they sit still for very long periods of time, and these alarm calls, as a result, will sometimes go on in the same place for many hours. So now that we've cracked the code of how robins use mobbing alarms for owls, this also sets us up to start learning about several other key predators that get similar responses, but with a few small differences. So robins will also make this alarm call in the presence of hawks like sharpshin hawks, cooper's hawks, and even larger hawks like redtail hawks. But unlike owls who rely on their stealth and patience, hawks are very active hunters, so the alarm calls also move around a lot more and sometimes cover much longer distances, which make them more challenging to find. You might hear a short set of mobbing calls that sounds a lot like an owl perch somewhere, but then very quickly it moves to a different location and you have just a brief window of time to actually catch that movement and see what's happening. It's also not just intense predators like hawks and owls that drive robins to make this first alarm call. Blue jays can also trigger mobbing alarms during the nesting season when they're looking for an easy meal of robin eggs. It's very common to hear robins making this call as they chase blue jays away, but typically you only get one or two robins responding and the overall length of the alarm sequence tends to be a lot more brief.
Even humans can cause this alarm. If you happen to get too close to a robin nest, you might notice a robin suddenly makes this call very close to you, but then when you move back away from that location, they calm down again. This is a fantastic way to locate robin nests and understand how to be more respectful of their homes. So it's amazing how much we can learn from just this first alarm call, but if you want to have the greatest flexibility to find as many different predators as possible, robins also have another alarm call that is much more subtle than the mobbing calls they make for owls and hawks. It's so subtle in fact that you might not even realize at first that it is an alarm, but if you listen carefully, it's this slow, mellow, rhythmic tut call that repeats at regular intervals every few seconds. So robins will make this quiet tutting alarm sound for many different predators, but especially cats. Everything from the smallest house cat to bobcats, and I even saw this alarm happening around a family of cougars when I lived out west. But if you want to know the best way to learn this alarm call as quickly and easily as possible, I highly recommend starting with house cats. And there's a few good reasons for this. The first is that house cats are extremely common, and there's a very high likelihood that you have frequent opportunities to observe robins alarming at cats right around your home. The second is when you're first learning, it makes a big difference if you can actually see the animal that's causing the alarm, at least some of the time, because just like the peak sound that we discussed earlier, this tut call isn't exclusive to predator alarms, and there are all kinds of situations when robins make this tutting sound, and it doesn't always lead you to a cat. So by initially focusing on house cat alarms, which are so much easier to observe than their wild relatives, you give yourself an ideal learning environment, and this makes it so much easier to distinguish true cat alarms from all the other uses of this call. So one of the hallmarks of a true cat alarm is that it tends to go on in this very slow, steady, and repetitive rhythm for a sustained period of time, at least five or ten minutes of continuous alarms, and often quite a bit longer. And if you think about what's actually happening here, the cat is very slowly making its way through the robin's territory, so that as the cat moves along, if you listen very carefully, you'll notice those robin's alarm sounds also very slowly and gradually move from one part of the forest to another. And this is actually what makes it possible to assess things like how fast the cat is moving or if it changes direction. And based on these dynamics of movement in the alarms, we get a pretty good sense for what that cat is actually doing. So if you learn these alarm dynamics first with house cats, then it actually becomes incredibly easy when you're in a place with bobcats, because this continuous tutting alarm rhythm is basically identical, and this similarity extends even to larger predators. So when I had the opportunity to study these alarms with mountain lions, it's amazing how much it just sounded like plain old house cat alarms. But while the actual sound and pacing is essentially identical across different cat species, one key difference to note is that with house cats, it's often just one single robin sounding the alarm. In contrast, when a wild bobcat or a mountain lion walks by, there are usually multiple robins, at least two and sometimes even more. And it's not just robins that join in. You'll often hear sparrows, juncos, chickadees, towhees, all kinds of classic ground feeding songbirds alarming together. And it's worth mentioning that while cats are definitely the most common trigger I've found for this type of alarm, I've also been surprised to hear it for other animals too, like foxes. So up to this point, we've been focusing on alarms that robins use to directly confront predators or warn others openly when some danger is nearby. But robins also have a secret weapon, an alarm call which allows them to warn others about danger without giving away their own location. Imagine being able to send a warning about a nearby threat while also staying completely hidden in the shadows. That's exactly what robins are able to do with this next alarm strategy. 
This alarm call is so dramatically different from the first two that many people don't even realize that it's a bird call when it's happening. It's this incredibly high-pitched whistling sound that has a quality of ventriloquism that cuts through the natural soundscape while also being very hard to pinpoint. This is no accident. Occupying this very narrow, high-frequency band of sound makes it nearly impossible for predators to locate the alarming robin by sound alone. This is particularly effective against the robin's most dangerous threats like bird hunting aerial predators with up to 95% of their diet being songbirds like robins. I've had countless experiences where it sounded like these alarms were coming from incredibly long distances, but then after a few minutes of searching, I discovered that the robin was actually just a few feet away. Other times, I'd hear the sound shifting like it was coming from different directions as I moved around the landscape. The other challenge is if you have any hearing loss in the upper frequencies of sound, you might not even hear this high-pitched whistle at all. It might just sound like a sudden distinct silence has fallen over the whole area. At first, you might even think the robin is feeding because they often make this alarm call on the ground in the same locations where they hunt worms. But if you actually watch the robin making this call, their body language is unmistakable. They become extremely stiff, alert, and frozen in space as their gaze becomes fixed on the distant horizon. If you shift your own focus to look off in that same direction, you might catch a glimpse of a hawk soaring in the distance. You might also be surprised to learn that one of the most common triggers for this high-pitched alarm isn't a hawk, but rather a crow. Crows are notorious nest robbers, and during the nesting season, robins are on high alert for crows because unlike the jays, which can be chased away with mobbing alarms, crows are much more capable of overpowering robins, so their first line of defense then becomes stealth, and they'll often use this hard-to-locate alarm to warn others about lurking crows without attracting unwanted attention. It took me a long time to figure out why these high-pitched alarms were so incredibly common during spring and early summer, but if you think about it, crows are everywhere. And part of the reason why people don't notice this common predatory behavior is simply that they're so used to crows being very loud and obvious. But when crows are hiding in treetops looking for nests, they can actually be incredibly sneaky, and you won't always realize they're perched there unless you hear this alarm and spend a few minutes looking for them. This alarm is incredibly effective, and it's a great way to keep an eye out for nest robbing crows yourself. The really cool thing is if you learn to recognize this alarm first with crows, you'll be primed and ready to start hearing it with hawks too, even outside of nesting season. Robins have mastered the art of alarm communication, and by understanding their different alarm calls, you can unlock a secret world of predator activity happening all around you. Even with everything we've discussed here, there's still so much more to explore with robin alarm calls and how all this relates to bird language and wildlife patterns more broadly. So I'll link to another video here if you want to keep learning. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.